I do know how to pick them. Lucky me. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another edition of the Nary Chase channel. I'm your boy Nary Chase, and in this video, we're going to be reviewing Halo 3. What makes Halo 3 such a great game is the gameplay and how it's been tweaked up a bit from its predecessors. There are new aspects to the gameplay, such as players being able to drop shields, players being able to utilize new weaponry, new vehicle types, all of which make the gameplay of Halo 3 very fun, addictive, and engaging. There is a lot to love about this game. The AI can be very challenging. It can get very challenging on harder difficulties. And enemy NPCs will deploy interesting um, strategies to take on the players. The new weapons and vehicles do feel refreshing. And how the enemy types are more diversified. Visually, the game, graphics do look pretty good, especially although they're a little bit dated, they still uh, managed to present a very good looking game. The environmental designs are just beautiful, especially the backdrops, which Halo has always had just beautiful wide shots of the backdrops, just everything just going on in the distance. It just can't get any better. There are some levels that have a lot of great detail to them, specifically the flood level towards the ending of the game, even to the point that the detail it just makes it just looks gross. The score, of course, is just beautifully done, and it definitely just brings such weight to the Halo universe, where there's just somewhere in the in-game cutscenes, or where there's just in-game in general. It just does a great job of facilitating what Halo is, and if you like what the first two games had to present when it comes to the soundtrack, you'll definitely love what Halo 3 has brought to the game, too. Now, one of the biggest problems that everybody is admitting to is the campaign. And the campaign is uh, pretty extensive and it does tell a pretty compelling story. However, it is shorter than the previous installments, especially Halo 2, which definitely brought the storytelling up a notch. Uh, where players are actually able to see what's going on on the other side of the war with the Covenant. Unfortunately, that aspect is missing in this game. And I think the game does suffer from it much. At this point, the humans and the elites have joined forces to stop the Covenant from activating the rings. And it would have been nice to actually see what was going on on the elite side of things and not just following specifically what's going on with the Master Chief. Now, I'm not all for the game having to be split into two stories, but I will say Halo 2 did make the Arbiter a very significant character. And I will admit that Halo 3 really doesn't give, his, give the character that much spotlight. Also, a storyline that was brought in Halo 2 that wasn't really addressed in Halo 3 is how the elites had to deal with learning that everything that they believed in was false and the betrayal of the Covenant towards their species. I think I actually would have added a bit more weight to the story too and made the character of the Arbiter a bit more prominent. Now, throughout the campaign, players would end up seeing that Cortana is calling out to the Master Chief because in the end of Halo 2, he had to kind of leave her behind. And I think that's actually a great way to actually not only bring back her character, but also kind of show this relationship that's been built between these two characters, how these first two games have established that. And I did really uh, enjoy it. However, I will admit that due to how the game ends, it does feel somewhat lackluster because these two finally are reunited, but they aren't, they aren't giving anything to do at that point. I wish that they could have done a little bit more, giving us maybe another uh, chapter, another stage to explore what these two have been missing, try to reconnect. And I think that was missing in this game. Yes, the grave mine is in the game, but it isn't an actual presence that you see. You somewhat feel it, but not enough. And I wish the game would have allowed for his presence to be felt more. Perhaps if you're going throughout the flood levels, perhaps fight some of the tentacles or many parts of them 
uh, that it was standing around the area that it controls. If they didn't do it that route, why not just end the game off with a great boss battle with the character? That would have been really awesome to see what the Master Chief, the Arbiter, Cartana, what they had to do to stop this menacing creature that, from absorbing everybody. I did enjoy the hammer. The hammer is literally one of the most badass weapons in the Halo universe. One hit from that to kill just about anything. Hell, it'll kill a vehicle. The Spartan laser that was uh, introduced into the game where you can just blow up any vehicle, kill almost any enemy. Great addition. Also, there are some new uh, vehicles. Not much more that really stand out too much on the, uh, the human side. But the Covenant have these new... Uh, rocket propel ones uh, that the brutes use and those things are completely badass if you thought the ghosts were pretty cool you would definitely like these because not only can they be used to shoot enemies they can also be used to ram them and it is incredibly fun doing it but aside from the gameplay and the campaign of course the highlight of halo 3 is its multiplayer aspect and it is phenomenal it's fantastic it's highly competitive it's fast paced certain maps uh will have for a more intense uh more close-knit fighting which will add into the intensity of the battles and there are some that are quite large utilizing vehicles make making for more tactical combat and it does a great job of just keeping the gameplay fun addictive and completely engaging people that enjoy the 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 uh, online aspect of Halo 1 and De and Halo 2 definitely would get a kick out of this especially if you have a large group of friends that enjoyed this game um also there is the map editor it's fantastic you'll be able to edit the different maps and even actually have combat in uh, while doing it so it just makes for a very diversified and very just crazy experience online and i highly say everybody that gets a chance to just jump on that to just enjoy it because it's definitely there the replay editor is just a great addition because you can go through an entire level turn around and then watch it from these various angles pause it and just watch it and it's pretty cool I mean, there were certain at, uh, times I'd be in the middle of a firefight and I'd go back and watch it and I'd just pause it and just go past the Master Chief and just see what the bad guys were doing on their side and when I played it again. And it just made for a great experience, especially considering how linear the campaign can be. But this does actually add to making going back through the different campaigns, possibly trying different techniques in battle, then turn around and watching it either from your end of it or perhaps the enemy side. Or if you have multiple players, you can actually follow their movements. So there's just a lot you can do when it comes to the map editor as well as the replay editor. And it just makes for a great experience excuse me it's not a map editor it's called forge so it's a lot you can do with forge i will say i did like the voice performances and i thought they did a great job uh they gave a lot of depth to the character i would have liked to have seen a little done a little bit better is the relationship between the master chief and the arbiter and it does not feel like this game really addresses that like these two uh actually that hated each other at one point actually kind of grow to work together and yes they do work together and yes there is something there but it isn't completely fleshed out now i didn't mind the ending and there's a lot of people that didn't like it but i kind of liked the, the way it was going because it was somewhat open-ended but it did feel like a halo ending so i actually liked halo 3 there was a lot to it there were some things that i didn't like yeah the campaign was pretty linear it did feel shorter and the AI was some jackasses at times. There should have been a boss battle uh, with the Grave Mine at the end. The campaign was good enough for me to enjoy myself and enjoy the story, especially with some of the characters. Uh, I did like the story. I did like the voice performances. I thought they were great. A lot of new additions to the gameplay were done really well, and I really appreciated them. The soundtrack always a definite plus i did like the visuals especially the backdrops which i thought were done really well but 
ultimately it is the multiplayer halo 3 definitely deserves a four out of five it definitely would have gotten a five out of five had the campaign been a little bit longer so guys in the comment section below let me know what did you think about halo 3 do you think it's better than halo 1 and 2 and also what are some things that you think of that could have made this game a bit better also, guys, be sure to hit that like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification button to get the best of what's going on here on the Narrow Chase channel. 